and everyone. That was really good. <laughs> Now, the message that I started the service with, which really, of course, was me listening to uh, Dr. Glenn Thomas ride out singing it and trying to get the, the right note there. It's a longer song. It's a gospel song. How many of you were at GA a couple years ago when he and in the service for um, black UUs, um, Blue, how many of you were there and saw that service and heard him and the choir sing that? It's quite an amazing event at General Assembly. Uh, and I remember seeing the video afterwards. And actually, during you could see it too, because they had big screens that choir members were singing, and some were in tears singing it. There was one African-American woman in particular who was focused on for a bit. She was singing with tears flowing. She meant the song, which is that we need each other. This was a, a time in particular, not that it's gone away, but when the whole issue of black and brown, especially black and brown young men being shot in the streets was just you know, um, a huge Spark came to the Unitarian Universalist Association, and, and it's still going on. But that was a moment that will always be in my mind and heart. How it is that this woman, and I don't know her life story, so I'm projecting some upon her. But as an African American living in this time, I imagined I imagine that part of her response was, we can't do this alone. We have to come together, all of us, to stop some of the evil that goes on in our society. We have to face up to it, call it out. We can't do it alone. We need each other, not just to survive, which is, of course, fundamental, but to thrive. And as Bob said, General Assembly brings thousands of Unitarian Universalists together, adults, youth, children, thousands. If you've never been to General Assembly, how many of you have never been? OK, folks. Uh, who wants to get the bus ready? <laughs> this year, General Assembly is in Spokane, Washington, which is not so far away. I know it's not free, although you can volunteer and get either a discount or freebie registration. Hotels are not cheap, even in Spokane, Washington. There's Airbnbs, there's student housing sometimes available. There are also other UUs who are offering hospitality. If you can, if you're considering it, if you can consider it, if you can take that next step and get ready, registration is started. It was 9 a.m. yesterday, no, March 1st. 9 a.m. March 1st, the registration started. So. I urge you to seriously consider going, maybe traveling together, sharing rooms, whatever you need to do, because you will find in that experience, well, a variety of things. But one thing you're bound to find is where your commitments lie and where they belong in terms of your faith, your commitments to Unitarian Universalism in general, and to recognize and feel it, experience it, that we are part of a much larger movement. And together, we can do so much that alone, not just individually, but as one church community, alone we cannot do. We can do so much more together. And we do. So I want you to consider that. And if you need to talk to me or 
Bob, I'm volunteering Bob, who's been there, and uh, others of you who've been, uh, please you know, talk about what it's like and what the possibilities are, and maybe make this year your year. Next year, it's in Providence, Rhode Island, which is a lovely city. I went to my first graduate school there. Brown University sits up on a hill, and I was busy drinking and writing poetry. <laughs> I don't recommend the first part, but maybe you'll be inspired, I don't know, to write. To write, not to. Religion has become almost a dirty word for some people. It's used as a political wedge. And as much as those who believe in the strength and, and are connected to religious traditions, as much as they continue to be, the numbers are, as you all know, falling in a general sense. There are great successes in religious tradition. I know I came into the ministry in part, in part, because as a child I saw Martin Luther King on TV. Jesse Jackson I met. I saw that religion didn't have to be what I had in my own heart and mind at that point, which is the cause of great hatred and pain and suffering. Now, I'm not saying it, it doesn't serve that function in our world. I'm not blind. But there's something else that organized religion can do. First of all, be organized and pull people together for common cause. And I was listening to a TED Talk. If you don't listen to TED Talks, I highly recommend them. I was listening to a TED Talk uh, by Rabbi Sharon Bros. And she talked about the great failure of religion today. One of the failures being the political wedge issue. But another is, as she put it, a pernicious trend of religious routinism. Doing the same thing because it's what we always have done when some of those same things certainly can be nourishing, some of those same things are devoid of vision and of soul, quoting her. That resonated for me, and she had a good comparison. She said, you know, when you first get married, first anniversary comes around and you think, oh, I'm going to do X, Y, or Z for my beloved. I'll get flowers. I'll do whatever. Fill in the blank. I'll be sure to offer a shoulder massage or whatever else you want to offer. First anniversary, you, you remember that one. You honor it. But when it comes to the sixth or seventh or the sixteenth or the thirty-sixth or what have you, you forget sometime. And it's come and it's gone. I see some of you going, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> you forget and all you can do is hope that your spouse forgot too. <laughs> religion, the rabbi tells us, religion is a container. But after centuries now, many centuries now, many, many centuries, some things start to feel like being mindless, devoid of vision, and of soul. So she points out a few things. Nothing I have to say today, by the way, is original thinking on my part. Just want to be clear about that. She points out four commitments. We need to make as a religious community. One is wakefulness. We need to be awake. And one of the issues there is, of course, that today social media brings world events to our attention. Boom. 
you know, a baby washes ashore, an immigrant family trying to get from here to here, and a, an infant washes ashore, and we see their body on the beach. Millions of people see that almost instantly in social media, through social media. So what that should be, besides an oh my God moment, is a call to action. We are the fire department and there's a fire. The world is on fire. And it's our job to do what we can and to know that there are things we can do individually and together to put that fire out. The second thing she says is that hope is not naive or an opiate. Cynics may say that it is. You know, if, you, if you've ever read my notes in the monthly uh, column that I write monthly, you'll see that I say hope is not idle every time. I sign off with that. It's also not naive not something to drug you. What happens when we see these events through social media or other means? What happens when we see these events and after a while what happens to us is that we get numb if we let ourselves, if we let each other because actually if you're in that place sometimes you don't even know that's what's happening but if you start to disregard that the world is on fire Sometimes we need to remind one another and say, okay, what are we going to do? What are the simple things and not so simple things we can do? There's a Jewish tradition, uh, the rabbi tells us, of having two pieces of paper in your pocket. On one of the pieces of paper it says, I am but dust and ashes. It's not all about me. I can't control everything and I cannot do this on my own. And on the other slip of paper it says, for my sake the world was created. I can forgive, love, show up, protest, be a part of this conversation. Systems of oppression benefit the most from one thing, radical individualism. The me, me, me ethos of our culture today. And we must be countercultural and talk about what we need, what this community needs, what our Unitarian Universalist community needs to do the work of putting out fires. Change takes time, incremental steps, most of the time unless you're willing to resort to violence. Sadly, violence is often serving people as a kind of conversion moment where we're just sort of going along and then something happens to somebody we love, that we care about, and suddenly we're on board for gun control. Or we're on board for you know, paying teachers because they're out on strike for weeks on end and our children aren't getting the education they're supposed to get. Or our friend down the street goes bankrupt because healthcare doesn't take care of their loved one who has <coughs> cancer or some other life-limiting disease. So they, they have to sell their house, they have to declare bankruptcy. That's when people have what we might call a conversion moment, but we need to be smarter and more open-hearted than that to, to come to our understanding our conversion moments sooner. Until all of us is free, none of us is free, said Emma Lazarus. She's the one who wrote, you know, give me your tired, your poor. It's part of a poem that she wrote, The New Colossus, in the 19th century. I think there's truth in this, and I, I think it should be one of our guideposts. Until all of us is free, none of us is free. And I don't just mean slavery, of which we have slavery today. 
I mean all the ways that we imprison one another and ourselves. The faithful fools had their week-long street retreat this past week. I did not join them this time. I've done it four or five times over the years, seven days and nights on the streets of San Francisco. I think you noticed it was pretty rainy. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of that week, I saw more joy in the faces of those who came off the street more depth of connection to humanity and our common humanity. And what James Luther Adams tells us is that we must understand that doing the good in the world and living our faith means we have to stay in touch with what it is that we individually and collectively believe. I don't mean necessarily the things that bring us to argument, but why can't we just believe differently and not argue about it? Why don't we just examine that, examine ourselves? What is it that we believe indivi individually, and what are the collective beliefs, our principles perhaps, eh? And how can we live into them? Because it is our commitments, James Luther Adams reminds us. Do you know who James Luther Adams is? Some of you do. Well, he is a preeminent, he was a preeminent Unitarian Universalist, ethicist, professor, minister. And what he says is that we have to look at our beliefs, but we also have to look at our commitments. Because if our beliefs don't translate into our commitments, into what it is we do with those beliefs, they're not worth having. A faith worth having, he says, in great summary, is the one that we pay attention to, that we examine, and that we line up as best we can with our commitments, what we do in the world. I invite you to examine. It is, you know, the High Holy Days in Judaism, one of the issues, of course, is to sort of take one's inventory for the year, and then the book of life for the year is open for just so long, and then it closes, so you're supposed to make amends and do all these things. We don't have a firm tradition in our Unitarian world like that. But I invite you to consider how it is both individually and collectively this congregation can take a look at its commitments, that you individually and collectively, what are our commitments? What is it that our mission statement says? What does it mean? Are we living into it? Where are we falling down? Where could we help each other up so that we are more in sync with our mission? You are calling a new minister, and I am so excited for you. What a wonderful time. You're just on the edge. But your new minister will not save you, will not do it for you, will not fix what is broken for you. You need a strong staff. You need strong commitment, most of all, to find your way, to join with your minister to do the good you dare to dream. Have faith. Examine it regularly. Match it up to what it is that you do day by day to the best of your ability, be present. Because there is a fire going on in this world. There are fires all around. Let's help one another to do that good we can. Amen.